there's a, there's a lot of different people out there to have a dram with. I'm not quite sure where to start. For, for me, and it's going to be a great cliche because we're sitting here at the distillery, but George Smith, I would be fascinated to know what he thinks of what, what's surrounding us here. Yes, it would be that nice to have a dram. Though I, I still think sometimes I might be in awe of him because of uh, <laughs> the great man and what he went through, but I'd be fascinated to hear his stories. And would I measure up to him? We would say, yeah, damn didn't come out from Dufton, you know. <laughs> but uh, I would like him to taste the whiskey we make now to see that he's uh, well satisfied that we've continued that legacy right through. One of my heroes was Robert Burns, a fellow Irishman, who wrote extensively about his love of uh, Scotland, of uh, the female form and of Scotch whiskey. Not necessarily in that order. Okay, he was a customs officer when he passed away, but I'm not going to hold that against him. <laughs> but a remarkable man, just the same. Some of the people that I'd like to sit down and enjoy a dram was is Gorbachev, who's uh, changed the world that we've, well, I've lived in. But he probably knows now. No, he, there's, there's certainly no doubt he changed, changed the world. And did he do that? sitting there contemplating a whiskey or did he sit with a group of advisors and saying how do I do this? I'm sure, I'm sure coming from Russia he'll, he'll enjoy a good spirit so I'll maybe uh, take him in the line of whiskey. For, for me it's more the writers, you know, the, the talkers, the people who go out there and travel around, mm -hmm. the Brysons, the, the Alistair Cooks, the, the, the Paul Theroux of this world that mean a lot to me. I do a huge amount of reading when I'm travelling and just to understand and get under their skin and see what makes them tick. Probably might like to speak to John Barney, who was, he built his own distillery. He's distantly related to myself. There was one of the guys that, in Barnard's book, he's distantly related. I'd love to speak to those guys and their influences. Were there, was their influences similar t to myself? No, we talked about George Smith earlier. Fire John Carr. Yes. He's the boy who gave us the recipe, wasn't it? He Eight balls of malt to make recipe. aqua vitae. Yeah. It's exchequer roll 3-1-1 at Edinburgh Castle. Where did he learn his distilling? <laughs> no, let's take him a dram of what we make today and yes. see how it compares with what he was making six hundred years, five, six hundred years ago. That's right. We, you, we, we come to a more modern era, the captain, Bill smith Grant. He was asked, and it's, in a, it's on record, they asked him what made Glen Lovett different. Question that I'm endlessly asked. And he says, a certain fiddle-faddle factor. And that's that's my secret. The fiddle-faddle factor. That makes the Glen Lovett special. So there's another interesting guy we could have a drum with. I look forward to translating that into Japanese or Chinese. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see how that works. <laughs>